This thing is menstruation. It's huge amounts of human vibration. Religion versus spirituality. I mean, sex sounds right. And friends, you are thinking about it. gave me a camera, a small one, when I was starting high school. I was living from Byron Bay to Sydney, and he thought it would be a good idea for me to have a hobby and explore my environment. But unfortunately, I didn't show much interest. I only picked it up when he insisted. When I moved to Bali, I met Suki, a parent at school, and he was offering a course in photography. So, I decided to take it. This is where my love of photography started. The first course we did was walking around Sivan Kaza, the village around the school, where Suzuki took us to the houses closest to the school, where some local people lived. We went to one house and introduced ourselves to the only man and woman who lived there. They welcomed me to see fake photos of them. At this house, I took one of the best photos I think I've ever taken. It is certainly one of my favourites. Sadly, Puck passed away not long after I took this photo. But his memory is not in this image. Over the following two years, I did every course that he made available. My love for photography, and particular portrait photography, started to grow. When I travelled to Europe last year, I was fortunate enough to do a few photography workshops while I was there. Each workshop I did in each city showed me a new way of approaching photography. For example, the course I did in Berlin started at dark. This is Blue Hour. The course in London focused on street art, Amsterdam, on architecture. But it was a course I took for one week in Paris that introduced me to a completely new style of photography, black and white film photography. This is the first photo I ever developed. Some of you might recognise this as Benny. This is her last year in Paris. Anyone who knows me knows I'm retro. I guess, but I guess in old-fashioned clothes. I listen to my music on a record player. I suppose it was just a matter of time before I found analog photography. <laughs> With the development of digital photography, the art of film photography started to disappear. It was only in the last few years that there's been a revival. It's a bit like record players disappearing for years, and now people are recognizing the beauty in the old. However, with darkroom photography, there are some nasty problems. To produce a black and white photograph, there are three stages of development. First, the paper is placed in a mixture called Siddhartha, it then goes in the stop bath, and then a fixture is described. These stages of development contain a mixture of strong chemicals that can cause health problems. Contact dermatitis is the most commonly associated with treatment. Is an allergic reaction to the skin. Gloves are a good way to prevent it, but it can happen any time. Other stuff can get pretty nasty too, such as neurological problems that absorb through the skin or breathe in. Darker photographers normally receive no training in the proper use of chemicals. Perhaps the main reason for this is that the photochemicals are generally regarded as safe by the photography community. However, this is not the case. Normally darkroom workers have no safety equipment, such as eye, air ventilation, eye washers, showers, or fire extinguishers. Any air ventilation is non-existent, resulting in the chemical levels well above acceptable standards. Any air ventilation that might exist is often being blocked when cracks of light are being seen. Chemical threats to the environment is in at this point. The photographers, photography chemicals normally harm the environment in a number of ways. Firstly, chemicals are dumped, are released into the air. But most importantly, is how the chemicals 
I just throw it out. They commonly keep down sinks, toilets, and release into waterways. The proper method of disposal is rarely covered in parking, darkening books, or on carrying the coffee. The Ilford Rapid Pixar Chemical Tour I bought in Sydney says on it, not regarded as a health or environmental hazard under the current regulations. It then lets the caution stating you should not breathe in or come into skin contact with it. And then it states first aid advice if a problem occurs. This does not convince me that there is no environmental hazard myself or the environment. The Ilfa developer said on it, toxic to aquatic life and to dispose of it according to the local regulations. Does this mean that if you are in a country that does not have specific regulations, you can simply dump it in waterways with no consequences? The planet is facing an environmental crisis. Humans have been polluting the planet for many years, and it is time to turn that around. And reduce the amount of chemicals that cause a harm to effect. I've been interested in darkening photography for some time now, but I felt pursuing my passion goes against my environmental beliefs. So, I was basically alone. How could I follow my passion for the for darkening photography and not harm myself or the environment? So, I started researching alternative methods. Was there a way I could produce a dark and using ingredients that weren't harmful? I found some blogs online discussing the use of a mixture called Cracknol, which was made up of instant coffee, vitamin C powder, and soda. <laughs> I also heard you could replace the chemical stock bath with vinegar and the fixer with salt water. People had mixed results, so I started, I started experimenting to see if I could produce a good quality photo in an environment with friendly darkness. To carry out my research, I returned to our apartment in Sydney, where I could set up a darkroom, and met my mentor, Chris Reed, who mentored me through this. I began by experimenting one step at a time. First, I selected the photo and developed it in a traditional way using shop block chemicals. You can see this photo is fairly clear. Then I replaced the developer with the recipe I found online, Pathanol. <laughs> yeah. The result was not good. I experimented with the amount each time, and my second result was much better. <laughs> the result was not good, but getting better. I then changed my ingredients a few more times until I came up with an image I was pleased with. The recipe I used was one liter of water, 27 grams of instant coffee, 23 grams of soda ash, which is a water-soluble sodium salt used in swimming pools, and 3 grams of vitamin C powder. There are still some differences. The Cashmere has a more slightly coloured coffee, which I quite like. <laughs> I then replaced the stock glass with vinegar and the result was virtually the same. That was an easy replacement. I then switched the fixer with salt water. This process changed from 5 minutes to 24 hours, which is less convenient, but still had good results. We have yet to see how long this image lasts. I expect this image to be less stable. The photography paper contains silver halide, which is a heavy metal. It is a silver that reacts with the light to make the image. While I have yet to find an alternative, stable alternative, we can recycle this once it has been released from the paper. As I practice over the following weeks, my photo became more and more clear. The Cathanol is a genuine alternative for developing, developing black and white photos. With my new environmentally friendly bathroom, I was then able to work on an exhibition. 
I started exploring my love for both digital and analog photography, and my life getting between Bali and Sydney. I printed digital photos I took in Bali and placed them all around Sydney. And then I took my analog film and here the manual is shown here my results. My exhibition is available online at workingbasement.com. Oh, the whole point of analog photography is not to see it, it is to see it in real life, not through a screen. Some of my exhibitions can be seen at the world. I did not allow the traditional and the unenvironmentally friendly darkroom to inhibit my passion. Instead, I looked beyond what the mainstream had offered. All my own dreams are readily available. They are cheaper than traditionally bought chemicals. They do not have the same disposal regulations. They do need high process easier. This is a true alternative to traditional, traditional chemical development and can be used around the world. If analog photography is going to make a comeback, I hope it can be done in the way I have described. Thank you.